On August 24th, the first published results of the ongoing cloud experiment studying the connection between cosmic rays and climate appeared in Nature magazine. For those interested in furthering our understanding of how processes on Earth, including climate, are affected by solar and galactic processes, the publication of the cloud experiment's results is good news. For those who have sought to use the specter of man-made climate doom to enforce a Malthusian agenda of deindustrialization and depopulation on the planet, it's not so good. Despite an official gag order imposed on the scientists to refrain from drawing any conclusions from their results, the work speaks for itself. First, some background. The cloud experiment at the CERN Particle Physics Laboratory in Switzerland was first proposed in 1998 in the wake of Danish scientist Hendrik Svensmark's studies showing a correlation between variations in the influx of galactic cosmic rays into the atmosphere and variations in the amount of low-level clouds that cool the Earth by reflecting sunlight. It appeared that incoming cosmic rays, which are partially modulated by the sun's activities, could help seed the formation of clouds, though exactly how was uncertain. This is the process that the cloud experiment is designed to study. Here's how it works. The three meter diameter test chamber is filled with a highly controlled mixture of air, water vapor, and other trace gases like hydrogen sulfide and ammonia at varying temperatures to mimic the conditions in the atmosphere. Artificial UV light mimics the sun, providing part of the energy needed for the gases to chemically react and form microscopic aerosol droplets. In the atmosphere, these aerosol droplets can grow to a certain critical size, at which point they can serve as condensation centers for cloud droplets, which is the first step in cloud formation. The cloud researchers have two sources of additional energy to add to the ingredients. First, the natural, secondary cosmic rays constantly pouring onto the Earth from the collision of primary cosmic rays in the upper atmosphere. Secondly, the massive particle accelerator at CERN, which can mimic the high energy particles coming from space. Since these cosmic rays create electrically charged ions that help in the formation and growth of aerosols, an artificial electrostatic field can be used to sweep the chamber free of these ions as a control to measure the specific effect they have on aerosol formation. A suite of sensitive instruments then measures the formation and growth of these aerosols, which under the right conditions become the birth particles for cloud formation. Current estimates are that about half of global cloud condensation nuclei come from such aerosols, the other half from solid particles like sea salt, dust grains, smoke, and even microorganisms. So, what do the results tell us? First, they show how ionization from cosmic rays does indeed enhance the production of aerosols, in some cases by up to a factor of 10. This graph shows the effect that cosmic ray-induced ionization has on enhancing the creation of aerosols. Here, with the electric field turned on and no ions present, the production of aerosols is pretty low. Here, the electric field is turned off, the cosmic rays begin creating ions in the chamber, and the aerosol production shoots up. Here, the particle beam at CERN is turned on to add to the ionization, and again, aerosol production shoots up. But there's more to the picture. The nucleation rates in the laboratory were found to be only between one-tenth and one one-thousandth the rate actually found in the atmosphere, meaning that the role of other trace gases not included in the initial experiments seemed to play a much bigger role than previously thought. In particular, this appears to include the kind of organic aerosols produced exclusively by living matter. The cloud team's report states, based on the first results from cloud, it is clear that the treatment of aerosol formation in climate models will need to be substantially revised, since all models assume that nucleation is caused by sulfuric acid, ammonia, and water alone. These same climate models also completely ignore the role of cosmic rays on cloud formation, 
on the excuse that no physical mechanism for such interactions have been established. These mechanisms are exactly what the cloud experiment is now showing. And in fact, they corroborate earlier experiments carried out by Svensmark using similar experimental setups. But rather than revise current models, it'd probably be better to scrap them all together and rebuild climate science on a whole new basis of actual experimental work. After all, the connection between cosmic rays, the sun, and the earth doesn't depend on validating any particular physical mechanism. Evidence from paleoclimatology has already established beyond a doubt the close connection between cosmic rays and climate over the geological history of the Earth. The effect of cosmic rays on cloud formation is one very important part of this picture. But as the cloud experiments results themselves indicate, there are still new principles to be discovered, such as the biosphere's active role in cloud formation, or, as we've discussed on this website, the influence of so-called space weather on Earth weather. In the end, it'll be our ability to harness these principles to willfully direct climate that will be our best laboratory for climate research. As the deadly weather events of the past year have shown, we ignore these larger solar and galactic influences at our peril. Trying to gag scientists is one thing. Keeping the sun quiet is another.